I just want to welcome Evangel fam and friends to this beautiful Sunday morning. And this Sunday morning, as everyone knows, we are celebrating our Independence Day. It is the 75th Independence Day this year. On 15th August, 1947, India got its freedom. Ending an almost 200-year British rule in the subcontinent. And it is a day of immense pride for all Indians as we commemorate the sacrifices made by millions of our freedom fighters who had sacrificed their lives in the freedom struggle and with their patriotism forced the British Empire to finally re retreat. And today we celebrate that independence that India had received in the year 1947. And today I just want to share a message and even though India received its independence, many of us in this country have not received freedom and independence from our own lives. And we just want to look at the word of God this morning and to see what God has to say to you and God has to say to me as well. When we look at God's word, we're talking about breaking free. We're talking about not only breaking free, but staying free of the power of sin, habits, generational curses. And even though a country received an independence and our freedom, many of us in living in this nation are still bound and are not free from sin, not free from the power of sin. And I just want to share God's word with you. To let you know that there is hope, there is freedom, and you can receive your independence in Jesus' name. When we talk about prisoners yearn for freedom, as do people who are enslaved by sin. They want to be free from the sins that make their lives miserable. And Jesus tells of a way to have that freedom, and that is to know the truth. And I don't know if you know that Jesus is the truth. Amen. And he says, Jesus says, I am the way. In John chapter 14, verses 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And truth is not an abstract concept. It's a reality. You know, when Pilate asked... Jesus, what is truth? When you read in John chapter 18, verses 38, what is truth? The truth was standing before him. Jesus came into the world to bear witness. In John chapter 18, verse 37, to bear witness to the truth. And he was the truth incarnate. And the truth in Jesus frees us from the consequences of sin from self-deception, from deception by Satan. The truth in Jesus shows us the way to eternal life with God. Amen. And the truth in Jesus will indeed set every one of us free. Free from sin's death penalty. From the effects of sin in our lives. From the curse that, that all of us have received. But Jesus sets us free. Amen. The fall of man from the time of Adam. And I believe Independence Day is here this morning for you and for me. Even as we celebrate the freedom of our country, we can celebrate freedom in our own hearts and in our own lives this morning. And today I want to preach on John chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 8 verse 32. And I want to look at this scripture this morning, I pray that God would bless you and that you'll be able to see the truth by the end of this message. Amen. So let's look at what Jesus said in our text. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. The truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. 
So number one, I want to talk about if you abide in my word. If you abide in my word. This morning, it is a choice. It is a choice. That's why the word if is mentioned in this verse. It is your choice to abide in his word. Every day we make a choice. Every day we got to make a choice. God, I'm going to abide by your word. I'm going to abide in your word. I'm going to abide as to what your word says this morning. Abide means to continue to learn, to ap apply the word to our lives, to live by it every single day minute of the day. Hallelujah. The next is you will know the truth. You will know the truth. In order to know something, we must get it in our mind through reading, observing, studying. Then when that happens, it can get into our spirit, into our, it begins to build our character, our conduct, our emotions for positive effect. So what happens to know the truth? We need to abide by it. We need to learn it. We need to meditate on it. We need to read God's word. We need to observe. We need to study God's word. We need to hide God's word in our heart. Amen. So how do we know the truth? We need to read it. And the truth is God's word this morning. And when we do that, knowledge of the word doesn't happen by accident. Knowledge of the word comes to us because we avail ourselves to know something. In this case, know God's word. Number three, the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. And when we know the truth... It is the truth that liberates us. Amen. Truth begins to work in our lives. Setting us free when we get it in us. Truth goes to work in our lives. Breaking chains of sin. Breaking chains of curses, habits, deceptions. You know, meditating on God's word, his word, the Bible, reading the word of God, studying the truth, that's God's word, gets into our minds, our hearts, gets into our spirits, our lives. And when we begin to apply it, amen, we begin to apply it to our daily lives, amen, by the truth. It's truth that breaks us free. Amen. It's truth that breaks us, breaks us free this morning. His truth. His truth. Amen. That is Jesus. You know, we are free from consequences of sin. We beget, begin to get free from generational curses passed down from Adam in its original fall of man. By the power of truth. By the power of the truth. You know, when we read the scriptures, they answered him. They answered him. What is your answer concerning his freedom? Is it full of pride? Arrogance like some of the followers that day? They said, we, we were never in bondage. Or is your answer humble and willing to learn this morning? Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to uh, humble yourself so that you can grow in the word of God? I believe whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. If you've committed sin, then you're a slave. Sin is a slave master. Because the Bible says all have sinned. The Bible says that we are all slaves to its power. Slaves to the effects of sin, to the curse of sin and the penalty. And if we remain captive to sin this morning, we will not abide forever or have eternal life and have a right to heaven. That's God's house. However, Jesus provides for humanity, independence, freedom, liberty, from these things. How does he provide? A son. Jesus offers us sonship. Amen. And daughtership. Forgiveness of sin. 
adoption into the family of God and a place in his house forever. The word of God says a son abides in the house forever. A son abides in the house forever. When we become sons and daughters through faith in Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slave to the effects of sin. Hallelujah. And I just want to read John chapter 1, verses 10 to 13. And it says, He was in the world, and through the world was made and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He gave the right to become sons of God. He gave the right to become daughters of God this morning. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. I just want to talk about that. Being the Son of God, being the daughter of God, Jesus has authority over sin. Amen. He has authority over the curse and its consequences of sin. He gives that power to all sons and daughters who believe in him. He gives that power to all sons and daughters who follow him. He gives power to all sons and daughters to con who continue to learn and apply the word of God in their lives. Amen. And this morning, if you are lost without Jesus... If you are lost without him, if you don't know the truth, Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the answer for this world today. Amen. He is the way to life. He is the way to hope. He is the way to healing. He is the way to deliverance. He is the way to heaven. And if you are in a place where you don't know what is the truth, and you're looking for the truth, and you're searching for peace, and you're searching for healing, you're searching for restoration, you're searching for deliverance from addictions. I believe if, if you do not know Jesus this morning, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. If you're watching me online, I want to invite you to pray this prayer so that you could come to know the truth. And the truth is nothing, none other but Jesus. And when you begin to know the truth, you would be set free. Amen. You would be set free from sin and the chains that bind you. Jesus breaks and destroys every kind of bondage and chain in your life. And you would be set free. And on this Independence Day... You could receive independence, amen, and freedom through Jesus this morning. And I just want to invite you to pray this prayer. If you have not received Christ, you just close your eyes and either you want to lift up your hands or lift up your heads to heaven and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. God, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for me, for my sins. I believe that you rose again on the third day. And I believe that you're coming back soon. Uh, Jesus, I pray that you would forgive me of all my wrongdoings and come into my heart. I receive you, Jesus, into my life. Make me a new person, oh God. A new person. Set me free from the sins that have bound me. I receive you right now into my heart. I receive you into my mind. And Lord, I want to live every day for you. I want to live a life that is pleasing for you. Help me, oh God, to be an overcomer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, you have received the truth. And that is Jesus, amen. You can be free from the sins that have bound you this morning. Get a hold of a church, your local church, wherever you are situated. Go to a church, a Bible-believing church, and begin to abide in God's word. Amen. Begin to know what God says in his word because this word is true. Amen. It will never fail you. This word is yes and amen. Those who are bound, 
with sin and habits and addictions. In our nation, there are many who are addicted to so many things that are just messing their lives up. And they cannot get out of it. They're struggling to come out of uh, drug addiction. They're struggling to come out of alcoholism. They're struggling to come out of tobacco, uh, tobacco addiction or pornography or whatever addiction that you are in right now. Probably you have committed murder in your mind or uh, you, you, you've done criminal acts that nobody knows about. But the Lord knows about it. Jesus knows about it. And he wants to give you an opportunity to clean your life. I'm telling you, there is power in Jesus. And when you accept Christ into your heart that you just did, and when you ask God to help you overcome these addictions, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God and the power of God will come into your life and set you free right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just want to pray for those right now who are watching me, who are going through a struggle of addiction. And they are saying, on this Freedom Day of Independence Day, I want to be freed from the chains that are binding me. I want to be free from addictions that have been kept me down for so many years. I want to get up and be a brand new person. And you, you can do that. It, God has given you power to overcome your addictions this morning. And if you are struggling, maybe you want to raise your hand and say, God, it's me. I'm going through so many issues in my life that I'm, that I'm addicted to, God. And I want to get out of this addiction. But I cannot do it on my own. So, Father, here I am surrendering to you and saying, you give me strength, Holy Spirit, to overcome this addiction of, of drinking alcohol or uh, help me overcome this addiction of drug abuse father please I surrender it to you father I pray for those who are struggling with addictions our hearts are heavy to know that Satan has them bound by so many addictions and Lord I pray right now I come against that addiction in the name of Jesus and father I break the chains I destroy the chains of addictions over my brother and over my sister right now set them free on this day father loose them and set them free from the spirits of addictions Lord and I pray that you raise them up to be mighty men and women of God Lord with integrity and character Lord that they would follow you with all their hearts Give them the strength to overcome, Father. All things are possible, and I believe in Jesus' name. I also want to pray for Christians to come and to recommit. To recommit their lives to abiding in God's word. Many of us say that we are Christians, but we do not live that Christian life. We do not walk the Christian walk. We do not read God's word. And if it's, that's you and if you're saying, yes, Candy, I, I don't read God's word every day. I don't study his word, but I have a desire. I want, I want to be convicted to, to read and to study so that I can ab abide in God's word and I can know his word in my life. Then I just want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every Christian who who's has accepted Jesus into their heart. Father, I pray that a hunger and a thirst would come upon your people to abide in your word, to live according to your word, to study your word. Lord, I pray that you would fill them with passion and desire to, to seek after you, Father, in a very special way. Bless them and anoint them, Lord, to continue to walk in your word and to read and meditate on your word on a daily basis. I thank Thank you father I thank you and I bless your holy name before I close I just want to pray for our nation this morning I just want to pray for our prime minister our president for our chief minister I know that our nation is going through a pandemic but I just want to pray for our nation that God would bless the nation father we just thank you, God, that you are working through the nation and our nation because, God, you reign over our nation, Lord. You are seated on your throne, Father. And, Lord, what we see and experience is not the end of the story, Father, whether it is social unrest or whether it's political disrupt, uh, disruptions or public health crisis or financial calamities or weather catastrophes or, or family breakdowns, Father, I pray, God, that we 
we focus on your sovereignty, Father. We pray for everyone who is in the midst of our nation right now in situations, Father, that we cannot even fathom, Father. Lord, I pray that for unity, Lord, in the body of Christ in this nation so that we are brought to complete unity to, to show the world that you have sent us, Father, and we are standing in the gap right now praying, Father, praying for our nation, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, of our wickedness, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would heal the hurts of our nation, Father. I pray, oh Lord, that you bless every citizen of our nation, Father. Lord, we start from our Prime Minister, Lord uh, Narendra Modi and his family. We pray for our President, Lord Ram uh, Nath Kovit. Father, we also pray for our Chief Minister of Karnataka, Lord uh, Baswaraj uh, Bombay. Father, we pray for all the leaders of our country, Lord, that are standing right now in authority. I pray for wisdom. I pray for excellence, Lord, in whatever choices they make. Lord, I pray that it would be the right choices, Lord, as they lead this nation. Let wisdom rest upon our government. Let wisdom rest upon, Lord, our, our, the authorities in our government, Father. Lord, we pray for citizens, Lord, uh, from the president to the newest voter, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives together in all godliness and holiness, because our laws, Lord, uh, reflect true justice, Father, and we pray that we base it on righteous moral standards, Father. Your word says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a is disgrace to any people. Bless our nation, Father. Bless the people, Lord. Lord, this pandemic that we are facing, Lord, we come against it in the name of Jesus. And we ask for restoration. We ask for healing, Father. Lord, we ask for deliverance, Lord, from this pandemic in the name of Jesus. And as people are celebrating independence, day, Father. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless them with wisdom and, and, and understanding and knowledge, Father, that comes only from you. And I pray, O oh Lord, prosperity in the nation of India, Father. We release prosperity, Father, that everyone will be blessed beyond measure, Lord. Lord, that you would bless their finances. You would bless them emotionally. You would bless them physically. You would bless them in their workplace, Lord, in their going in and their coming out. We release as the body of Christ, prosperity upon our nation. And Lord, I pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be spread at every part of this nation, Lord. And we claim India for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And if you, ch church, or you watching online, if you were blessed this morning, I pray that you would send us a message on, uh, you see the WhatsApp number, you send us a message, log on to our website, and probably you could leave a comment as to how God has touched you, how God has healed you, and how you desire to know more of God. Because I believe when the sun sets you free, he is free, you are free indeed. Jesus is coming to your heart and he set you free. And even as you celebrate independence today, you can also celebrate freedom and independence from sin. Because you are a new creation in Christ. Be blessed, be blessed, be lifted up, be empowered, be encouraged. God bless you this morning. Amen.